So as we've seen so far, there are some very interesting ways that intuitionism has to read negation. And this plays an important role when negation interacts with the quantifiers. Classically, not all phi, where phi just stands in for any proposition, entails some not. For instance, if not all dogs are Dalmatians, then some dogs are not Dalmatians. But the intuitionists don't think that this inference holds in all cases. Here's one example. Take the full expansion of pi, which goes on infinitely. And ask yourself, is there any digit in the expansion of pi that repeats only a finite number of times? For instance, maybe there are just a trillion ones or 30 billion nines or something like that. But is there any number in there that repeats a finite number of times? Well, it has to be the case that not all of them repeat a finite number of times. Otherwise, the expansion of pi would be finite when we know it's not. So from this, we can say that not all digits repeat only a finite number of times in the full expansion of pi. Classically, this would give us the inference that some digit does not. Maybe it's nine, maybe it's two, maybe it's all of them. But intuitionists will reject this inference on the grounds that it doesn't tell you which one. Ordinarily, if you're going to give an existential claim, you have to give an instantiation of it, at least on intuitionistic logic and arguably on certain ancient systems of mathematics and thinking, especially about geometry as well. Because I can't tell you which digit it is, I'm not entitled to make the existential claim that some one digit doesn't repeat a finite number of times. I haven't given you a direct experience of the truth of this thing because I haven't really told you which digit repeats an infinite number of times and why. So here again, the intuitionists are very austere. You have to give me a direct proof and a direct experience of the truth of the existential claim that some digit does not repeat a finite number of times. Now perhaps you're thinking, well, wait a minute, we can just prove from not all x, say a x, that it follows that for some x, not a x. And the proof of this will look like this. But there's a problem here in that this proof relies, as you can see, on reductio or indirect proof. It has an indirect subproof. And this, as we've already seen, is rejected by the intuitionists on principal grounds. So here the intuitionists are also syntactically consistent in their rejection of the inference from not all to some not because the proof of this inference relies on reductio ad absurdum which, as we've already seen, they reject for their own reasons. 